is I want you to pretend that this is your dog. I want you to start on the ground here, do the head straight, put the dog on the table, and let me voice you through what you would do with this. I'm not expecting everything to be perfect. As a matter of fact, I want you to promise me you'll do everything in your power not to be perfect. I promise I'll do everything in my power not to be perfect. Hold your right hand up. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> when you want to start practicing the exam, do not do this with your actual dog. Because as you're fumbling through this stuff right here and trying to make the dog do stuff and you don't have a good connection, it's just going to be a fight. So you're not going to get it. So find yourself a stuffed animal that's closely the size of your dog and practice with this. So, you, so when you first put a table dog on the table, you want to make sure that your leash is out of the way. You're doing the head straight position like this. You support the weight of the body with your hand to lift up on the table. You want to have the head straight position in place before you put this dog on the table, because now you're in control. If you don't do that, if you just lift the dog up and go like this, now their head's all over the place. They're always sniffing. Where was the last one? Yeah, right, yeah. and so now you're just in a, a fight and it's taking up valuable seconds, and the judge is like, I don't want to deal with this. So they, people always complain. They say, well, the judge didn't give me any time. Well, that's because they knew if, you, if they gave you an hour, you still would not have this dog stacked correctly. So head straight position, put the dog up, set your feet, do whatever you have to do. Now, when you are stacking this dog, you start off with the head, neck and shoulders, top line, down over to the croup where the tail set is, and you're acting like you're just getting this dog set up, but you're actually Vanna Whiting this. You are giving the people a tour. Now your job, your, your judge at this point is probably watching the other dog if you're not the first dog. So what you're doing is you're acting like you're getting all this straightened out, but you're giving everybody a tour about how beautiful and perfect this dog is right here. You're also relaxing your dog. You're desensitizing your dog as you're doing this. So if I start from the head and the top line, now that puts my hand back here. So if my hand's back here, I want to get it back to the front to set that front foot. So now I'm gonna give a tour from the tip of the butt, how perfectly balanced this dog is by tracing that center line to the prosternum. Once I'm at the prosternum, that puts my hand in perfect position to set this front foot. When we're in this head straight position and we're setting a foot, we never wanna grab a foot here and then set it down we always want to take our fingertips where our fingerprints are and put it right here where the leg comes up to this upper arm and lift it back off the table. Once we lift it back off the table and we let it come forward, then that's going to place that foot without us looking right underneath the withers where it's supposed to be. If we grab this and we set this down, the dog will usually kick that foot out and it's going to be too far forward. When I am stacking a rear foot, I want to put the hawk joint right in the palm of my hand. Okay. And when I do that, that's gonna support this foot much better so the dog will feel more secure. When I, I'm gonna push it up into the body and that's gonna put a turn and bend into the stifle. And then I'm going to set this where it needs to be. If I go like this or I grab this foot here and set this, they're gonna kick that foot straight out it's gonna go in the wrong position and you will learn your, lose your turn of stifle. Right, awesome. After I set my front foot, I can set this one, head straight, do the exact same thing to set this one on this side over here. I don't have to switch hands. It's actually more efficient to do it this way. And after I set this front, then I trace my underline, which your underline in most breeds should be very similar to that top line and that will create balance. When you have dogs with a lot of coat and furnishings down here, if that is too heavy, like for instance, a miniature schnauzer, they take that hair down too far, that will make this dog look front heavy and not balanced. 
So your withers angle and your underline angle should be very similar. So now I can trace this coming back to this back and look where it sets that foot. It puts my hand right in position to set the rear foot. I come over and set this rear foot and now I'm done. At this point, when I'm done setting everything I need to set with this dog, I can give it a quick head straight and now I can back up to the end of this lead here. If I've taught my dog to stay, now the judge can be out there and see everything they need to see on this dog. As my judge is turning around, it's at that point where I can take my bait or if I'm practicing with those and I can flip that out, let the dog see that and now that judge sees a beautiful expression. You wanna practice getting expression with your dog. So I like to use poker chips because if you throw these properly, they'll go up and land flat and down. And when that happens, then the dog is gonna focus on that spot right there. <clears throat> if I have this dog and I want to get this dog to give me expression for a judge, I will show them the treat. In this particular case, it's a fake dog, so it's not real bait. But I wanna show them that I have this treat here I want to throw it up high so the dog comes up and looks at it like this and follows it down and comes over the front. I want to throw it directly in front of the dog. I don't want to throw it to the left or to the right because if I throw it to the left over there, then the dog's going to be twisted like this. If I throw it to the right, it's going to be twisted to the right and it's also going to move its foot placement. The other thing is, is I don't want to throw it too close here because if I throw it close, then it's gonna be looking down at the ground and you lose the whole thing. So if I have this right here in front of this dog's nose, I throw it high and I try to make it flat. See how it didn't roll around mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. That's because I threw it up high and I threw it without having it twirl so it didn't spin. Now if I twirl it like this, then it's gonna dance and roll around and I don't want that to happen. That's why I like to practice with poker chips. Okay, so that's how you hold it? Yep, I, I throw it like this and it goes up and flat. And see how it just laid flat right there? Mm -hmm. So that teaches you how to throw that properly so that your bait's not gonna roll all over the place. Now, do not use a poker chip when you have your real dog because you don't want them to eat the poker chip. <laughs> but what you're, you're using this for practice and then when you have your real dog and your real bait, if you do that, you're gonna go, oh, my bait flew, it landed and stayed in that one space instead of wobbling all over the place. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about lead control. So now my judge is gonna work their way around here towards the front of the dog to see that expression. And now they're gonna want an examine starting off with the bite. So at this point, I'm gonna take my right hand with these two fingers. Okay, so I have these two fingers next to my pinky right here. See that? Mm -hmm. See how that's draped over? Now I can pull this leash as I'm coming here and look at how it places that right where it needs to be for the head straight position. Mm -hmm. So these two fingers, I'm out at the end of this six foot lead like this. The judge sees my dog. You don't have to get away like that. That's something that's more advanced. But if you have your dog where you've taught him to stay and you're out of the picture, it presents a better image for the judge to see that not being distracted by you. So here, I'm working my way through here. That brings me right into the head straight position with little to no effort. I have my leash just hanging here on the ground out of the way so it doesn't become a nuisance or a distraction. When the judge comes, I'm going to take my thumb, place it on the lower lip. I'm gonna take my thumb here, open this up so they can see the bite. If it's a breed with full dentition, you can show full dentition on that. If the judge wants to examine it themselves, they can examine it themselves. But you wanna practice this. When you're practicing showing the bite, you don't wanna stick your head like this because then you're practicing showing the judge the back of your head and that's it. So here, the judge is gonna examine. I'm gonna go from my head straight position here when it's on the head, and now I'm gonna take my fingers and put it in between these jaw bones down here. 
So now I'm holding this like a fine piece of china so this judge can go over everything. If I have to, I can switch off to the side like this, still doing the head straight position without any pressure on the back of that neck. You just don't want to impede the judge while they're examining this headpiece. Once they're done with the headpiece, I can go back to the head straight position, step off to the side, let the judge examine the rest of that dog. If the judge wants to st step back and admire this dog, then I can come back over to here again, if I want, and get out of the way so they can see the final picture of this dog. So at this point, the judge is going to say, I want to see this dog down and back, or I want to see this dog in a triangle, or whatever it is. So now I have six foot of lead here. So what am I going to do with this? The easiest way to do this is I'm going to create some pressure with this right hand, and as long as I'm moving, it doesn't look like I'm making a lot of effort to wind that lead up. Put this dog in the ground, head straight, and then take my dog over to where I'm doing whatever the pattern is. Now, if I set this dog on the table like this, I have this six feet of lead, and the judge says, I, I want to see it down and back. And I start fumbling with this lead like this. Yeah, not so nice. It's not so nice, and the judge is like, hey, I only have so much time to do this. So again, as long as you're moving while you're doing this. They know you're making an effort anyway. And they don't even notice that you're winding all that up. Yeah. So just practice lead control with that. Okay. So now my leash is wound up. I'm in the head straight position. I'm putting the dog down on the ground. I get in front of my dog, back up, turn and go. Okay, that's a lot of stuff to remember right that there. That is a lot of stuff. Do not do this with your real dog until you're ready. Because if you do, you're just going to be fighting the dog and no learning will take place. Practice this with a stuffed animal. And if you do practice this with a stuffed animal, you'll get better and better and better. You will appear more confident. You will look more like what a leader should look like when you're actually working with the real dog. And everything will look fantastic. Now... Okay. Foot placement, you have to know what your foot placement is for your breed. So when you view from the front, you should be able to see the front of four separate feet. If I'm setting this front foot and I'm a table dog, I wanna place on the outside corner of this table, that way it's easier access for the judge. Now, if I place this at the tip of the table right here, mm -hmm. and I go one paw width from the side of this table, then I know that when I set this foot in its proper position, when ah. viewed from the front, it's perfect. But if I go like this, I'm guessing at it. So one paw width from the side out to the edge, place this right to the outside edge, and you'll have perfect foot placement every time. The other thing too, is when you set this rear foot, if you don't have a good bond with this dog, they're gonna play move the foot. So what you can do now is push weight onto that foot after you set it down, and that's called loading the foot. And that's gonna allow the dog to have even weight distributed through all the paws, so they're not gonna lift that up off the table or the ground or where, whatever you're doing. So start off with the headpiece and the ears and make it seem like you're getting all that stuff set up perfect. You're going down the back, the withers, the top line, the loin, the croup, the tail set. And then from there, you're gonna go from the tip of the butt and bring it in front through the center line all the way to the prosternum. Now you're on the underline. I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. So the tip of the butt, I, I center line, eyes. over to the prosternum. Once you're at the prosternum, now you're gonna set the front foot one width, one paw width away from here and right at the edge. Okay, that's a pretty big paw. <laughs> Especially for a lakey. Right. <laughs> okay, so now you trace your, your, go ahead and set your front on that side. Oh, okay. Yep, so that's good. All right, now bring your hand back over to here and trace your underline. Wow, I get to do the underline. Yep. And now go ahead and put the hawk joint right in the palm of your hand. Okay, bring that up and forward to put a turn in that stifle. 
and set that right on the edge. Boom. Set your other rear foot to match that. Okay. So at this point, you're going to switch hands to take this hand here and grab the chain, like the head straight position, but now you have it in your other hand. Okay. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, but anyway. Okay, so with your right hand, you're going to show the dog that you have a treat, and you're going to throw that high and try to put it right in front. Good job, but it had a little bit of a twist it to it, so it yeah. rolled over there. See, that's why I say poker chips are really good to practice this because it teaches you how to throw that just right so it doesn't have that roll. Okay, now try to throw it up and a little further and in front. Not bad. <laughs> so people think that it's so easy to do this. And, but that's why I like to train with poker chips because if you don't throw them right, they're not gonna stay in that same spot. They're gonna roll all over. And you don't want to be unethical. You, d you don't want to distract the other people's dogs. Right. So that's why these poker chips work so great for that. Okay, so now let's say that you've got a beautiful expression on this dog. Now I want you to take and bring this and start working your way out of the way Emily. over to the end. Yep, and so your judge is out here. Your judge gets done with this dog as it goes around and turns and sees this beautiful image. Now, don't look like you're a water skier holding on to a 15,000 pound boat. Make it seem like it's effortless, just one hand right there. You're just off to the side, get out towards the end of that lead more. Very nice. Okay, now as I come to the front, and I wanna see the expression of this dog, you need to start working your way back with, the, with your right hand up there with those two fingers because you're gonna slide these two fingers right into that head straight position. Okay, so go ahead and start working your way back. Go into the head straight position. That's not the head straight position, thumb, forefinger. That's right. Okay, show me the bite, please. You said you do it like this. Thumb here on the top. Okay. So, Just like, like this. yes. Okay, that looks great. Now, step back just a little bit. All right, I'd like to see this dog down and back, please. So, head straight. You, straight. You, first, you're going to have to get this wound up. So, move around while you're doing that. So I don't see that it looks like you're creating a lot of wasted time. Put the dog back in the head straight position. Okay, put it down on the ground. Exercise over.